I am delighted uh, with this opportunity to tell you about our work on interactions of fungi and bacteria. And in particular, our pursuits to understand evolution of fungal bacterial uh, mutualisms and also innate immunity in fungi. So this is, this is the work that stemmed from, from our pursuits of evolution of bacterial fungal symbiosis. And um, I should point out that fungi, as, uh, uh, as Tim uh, mentioned, fungi are increasingly recognized as host to, uh, hosts to endobacteria, and in particular, early divergent fungi, mucoromycota, mucoromycota, um, unlike um, Dicaria, harbor endobacteria that are ancient, highly co-evolved, and heritable. And our lab studies uh, glomeromycotina and the symbionts of glomeromycotina are vascular mycorrhizal fungi. But today I'm going to talk about our work on uh, endosymbionts of mucoromycotina. And uh, Greg is going to tell you uh, about endosymbionts of mortierella mycotina. Uh, tomorrow. So our model system that uh, we focus on is um, Rhizopus microsporus uh, symbiosis with uh, mycetohabitans. Mycetohabitans uh, was formerly known as Burkholderia. It is a, a beta proteobacterium. It is a, a, a pathogen of rice uh, causing rice seedling blight. It harbors uh, endosymbionts, um, although sometimes uh, it doesn't. Here is a hypha of rhizopus with uh, mycetohabitans visualized by um, YFP uh, expression. Uh, here are two hyphae of, uh, uh, two, I'm sorry, two spores of rhizopus filled with uh, mycetohabitan cells and uh, rhizopus microspores, uh, mycelium and uh, sporangia on uh, sporangiophores. And um, this system lends itself to uh, in-depth studies because unlike most of the symbiotic associations of fungi with bacteria, it is uh, easy to manipulate. Bacteria can be, fungi can be um, cured of bacteria, bacteria can be cultivated independently and put back into fungi. And both fungi and bacteria can be uh, transformed genetically. So I, as, I, as I mentioned, we are interested in the origins of mutualistic symbiosis and we use this system to address um, um, this question, but we also uh, noticed that this system can be used to understand innate immunity uh, in fungi. And so before I talk about um, our work, I would like to remind everybody that mucoromycotina are ubiquitous soil saprotrophs. They are food spoilage agents. They're, they are plant pathogens that are responsible for post-harvest crop diseases. And importantly, they are opportunistic pathogens of immunocompromised humans. And they are very difficult to treat uh, because they are resist resistant to most um, antifungal agents. Um, there are multiple applications of mucoromycotina, uh, ranging from cheese making to biodiesel production. And yet, with all these um, important um, uh, applications and ecological roles, this is one of the least understood groups of filamentous fungi. So in a way, we are using uh, uh, bacterial endosymbionts uh, of these fungi as probes to understand their uh, basic uh, biology. Uh, we became interested in the Rhizopus microsporus mycetohabitans um, symbiosis when we read the paper in, published in 2005 by uh, Christian Hertfeg's group. And this paper reported a presence of 
uh, my set of habitants, then it was called uh, Burkholderia. And um, this uh, bacterium was uh, attributed with the ability to produce a toxin, rhizoxin, which is uh, important for pathogenesis of rice um, in um, rice seedling blood. Um, the um, phylogeny uh, of uh, uh, Burkholderiaceae reveals um, uh, several different uh, species of um, bacteria that are associated with various hosts. Uh, Mycetohabitans is here, and uh, along Mycetohabitans, Burkholderiaceae are um, ho a home for uh, Mycoavidus. Again, Greg will talk about this hopefully, and uh, Glomerobacter endosymbionts of our vascular mycorrhizal fungi. But there are also many uh, symbiotic associates of plants in green here and uh, um, animals in blue. So uh, even before we started working on this system, it was known from Christian Herzog's lab um, that uh, these uh, endobacteria control asexual reproduction of the fungus. So a fungus that has endosymbionts will reproduce um, asexually uh, in a uh, typical way of uh, uh, mucoromycotina. But when um, mycetohabitans is removed by an antibiotic treatment, um, the fun fungus is only able to reproduce uh, vegetatively. Uh, a student in uh, a graduate student, Steven Mondo, uh, in our lab, became interested in whether uh, these endosymbionts uh, also control sexual reproduction of the fungus. And it turns out that, yes, uh, they uh, uh, either control it completely, so removal of uh, bacteria uh, from compatible mates either completely obliterates their ability to mate. So this, is, this plate shows uh, uh, successful mating between compatible mates of Rhizopus microspores. This plate uh, illustrates mating between the partners that uh, were cured. And you can see that there is no mating. Um, in some cases, mating is uh, reduced, but the reduction uh, it is, it is reduced by removal of endobacteria, but this reduction is significantly, um, the sporulation of, is uh, significantly lower than sporulation in uh, between mates that uh, have endobacteria. So uh, seeing this, these patterns, we became interested in the evolution of this particular symbiosis and um, reconstructed uh, the genealogy of uh, Rhizopus microsporus um, and realized that this association evolved from an antagonistic um, interaction. Um, the basal um, isolates on this uh, genealogy um, are non-hosts. Uh, marked in red in the phylogeny. And um, these non-hosts interact antagonistically when uh, faced with bacteria here. Um, these bacteria are isolated from the host. So uh, here, again, the, the same image that I showed you before, um, uh, previously cured host interacting with its own ba isolated bacteria becomes colonized, whereas the um, non-host isolates become um, stressed, uh, inhibited, and never colonized. So um, this led us to a conclusion that this particular um, symbiosis uh, evolved uh, from an antagonistic interaction um, through compensatory evolution in the host. 
And this was not really a, an original idea, this the compensatory evo uh, mutualism evolution through compensatory evolution um, uh, has been proposed by Dur Annen and Rolf Hextra. Uh, but we provided uh, additional evidence that uh, indeed the fungus is addicted for reproduction to its uh, bacterial uh, symbiont. So um, this, uh, this is um, illustrated or apparent uh, looking at the extant mutualism, uh, endobacteria uh, are responsible for um, facilitation of host reproduction, uh, symb symbiont removal, uh, causes loss of asexual reproduction and reduction of um, sexual reproduction. Now, we speculate that this association uh, involved from an antagonistic um, interaction in which uh, ancestral Burkholderia or ancestral Myceto habitants uh, used um, and manipulated fungal hosts um, to uh, extract energy from um, their hyphae. And this um, realization or this speculation made us think very carefully about interactions of non-host isolates with bacteria, which in turn led us to uh, realization that fungi possess innate immunity mechanisms. So what happened? We, uh, to really um, understand a little more about how fungi, both hosts and non-hosts, interact with the um, endosymbiont of the host, um, conducted transcriptional profiling experiments, interacting uh, previously cured host with uh, myceto habitants isolated from a host. Um, and um, we also interacted a non-host that uh, with the bacteria isolated from the host in, um, at two time points before the partners came into contact and uh, after the partners um, became um, um, close in physical proximity. And I'm not, not going to bore you with the, uh, with the details of transcriptional profiling. Um, I am going to tell you about the observations that we made. And because these observations are based on transcriptional profiling, we were able to really use them only to formulate hypotheses to be tested, uh, uh, and those hypotheses are about a molecular dialogues between host and non-host fungi and um, uh, bacteria that are capable of colonizing the host. So um, pre-contact, bacteria react to both hosts and non-hosts in a very similar way, as if they did not care whether they are interacting with a mutualist or antagonist, um, they engage um, expression of uh, genes encoding uh, type two and type three um, secretion system effectors. And in turn, um, hosts, uh, respond with uh, cell wall remodeling, and non-hosts respond uh, with cell wall remodeling, or I should say uh, they change expression of genes that are involved or uh, in, in uh, uh, cell wall biosynthesis. But these changes are quite different. Mutualists um, behave as if, way, is, as if they were preparing for um, accepting the uh, symbiont, whereas antagonists 
um, seem to uh, strengthen the, the, their cell walls in protection against bacterial entry. And these patterns continue uh, to the physical contact phase. So again, uh, the non-hosts strengthen um, their cell walls. And in addition, they uh, produce uh, reactive oxygen species. And uh, when we compare the patterns of expression of genes that are involved in reactive oxygen um, species biosynthesis, the um, non-hosts seem to engage in a very potent um, reactive oxygen burst, whereas the hosts produce uh, reactive oxygen species, but then they seem to uh, quench them. And this is all the only hypothesis, the reactive oxygen, the difference in reactive oxygen species production between host and non-host fungi is the only hypothesis that we actually uh, tested empirically, tested functionally. But before I tell you about that, I just wanted to mention that uh, this difference between reactive oxygen species um, output is also apparent in um, the symbiont or bacterial gene expression patterns. Uh, the uh, bacteria that interact with the non-host um, seem to uh, respond to reactive oxygen species stress. And these reactive, reactive oxygen species come from this potent um, reactive oxygen species burst that the um, non-host produces. So as I said, this is the only uh, hypothesis that we tested in this particular system. We quantified reactive oxygen output by um, using a, a, a nitro blue uh, tetrazolium staining. Nitro blue tetrazolium when it's redu is reduced by uh, superoxide radicals, it turns uh, blue. So um, the areas of fungal mycelium that are colored blue are um, um, accumulating reactive oxygen species. So this panel, this panel, uh oh, I cannot point. This panel shows the non-host interacting with bacteria. And you can see that there is quite, quite a bit of color development at the edge of the colony, as well as the inhibition of the colony growth. And bacteria are also producing uh, reactive oxygen species in, 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 in interaction with the fungus. And this is much different from the non-host uh, mog inoculated with uh, bacteria. The host does not really uh, develop uh, intense coloring. And this is uh, reflected in uh, measurements of um, color development. So uh, non-host interacting with mycetohabitants uh, produces significantly larger um, reactive oxygen species burst and uh, host quenches reactive oxygen species. So with this, we started thinking that these patterns really resemble uh, innate immunity responses in both plants and animals. So both raw uh, reactive oxygen uh, production and uh, cell wall remodeling. And these, um, these responses, we believe, although we did not really uh, uh, have, ha we have not done really uh, um, rigorous, uh, rigorous experimentation, but just by growing other non-host non mucoromycotina fungi, we see the same pattern of inhibition of uh, fungal colony growth it, when um, interacting with mycetohabitans myself, bacteria. And we see it in mucorcircinelloides. And importantly, mucorcircinelloides is the model species for mucoromycotina um, and, and can be manipulated uh, genetically and also in the sister uh, species of Rhizopus microsporus, Rhizopus oryzae. So um, innate immunity. 
innate immunity provides the first line of defense against pathogens, both in animals and plants. And um, it really relies on uh, pattern recognition receptors, both extracellular and intracellular, intracellular in animals, to detect uh, microbe-associated molecular patterns, MUMPs. And uh, once this, the presence of MUMPs is detected, that signal is transduced uh, to the nuclear, to the uh, nucleus, and uh, the cellular responses are elicited. And importantly, both animals and plants uh, have evolved innate immunity uh, systems, but those innate immunity systems are products of convergent evolution. So both animals and plants have um, extra and intracellular um, receptors. They have uh, signal transduction uh, modules and they have response modules, uh, which consist of reactive oxygen species production, uh, production of antimicrobial peptides and programmed cell death. But again, those specific components of these modules are completely different because they evolved convergently. So we started thinking about, well, how about fungi? Do fungi have innate immunity responses? And our experiments with rhizopus microspores, the non-host non isolates suggest that they do. And so we started looking at the literature and trying to figure out what is known about innate immunity responses in fungi. And uh, a study from Nick Talbot's group suggested that fungi don't really have those pattern recognition receptors that are so common both in uh, animals and plants. Instead, fungi seem to rely on adenylate cyclase uh, genes and proteins for perception of uh, microbial molecular patterns um, and maybe other receptors that are still um, unknown. And so um, here is the uh, cartoonish representation of adenylate, adenylate, adenylate cyclase um, in Candida albicans. And the key um, module of this modular protein is uh, a, a loose and re rich repeat um, structure that is res responsible for reception, of, for perception of peptidoglycan, uh, which is a component of bacterial cell walls. The signal fr from the um, lucid rich repeat module is transduced to the cyclase domain of adenylate cyclase, and the signal um, cyclic AMP is produced. Cy cyclic AMP is a signaling, common signaling mo molecule in um, fungi, and the cellular response is produced. Um, we thought about this um, signaling process, and we found an inhibitor of downstream signaling from adenylate cyclase inhibitor that um, uh, affects functioning of uh, protein kinase A. And we started playing with this um, by co-cultivating uh, host and non-host um, rhizopus microsporus. And I'm, here I'm showing you images from the non-host. So when we co-cultivated non-host with mycetohabitans, YFP-expressing mycetohabitans, in the presence of inhibitor, uh, mycetohabitans were able to enter the um, host, uh, I'm sorry, non-host hyphae. Without the inhibitor, um, as uh, previous experiments demonstrated, mycetohabitans was not able to um, enter the fungus. So this suggests that 
um, there, is, there are innate immunity mechanisms that are involved in uh, mutualism uh, functioning in uh, rhizopus microsporus and perhaps other fungi, and we are pursuing it. But more importantly, we are really interested um, in whether program cell death is uh, an, a component of innate um, immunity response in mucoromycotina fungi. So um, program cell death is uh, both in fungi, I'm sorry, in animals and plants, a kind of an ultimate way of eradicating um, invading uh, microbes. Uh, in animals, it is uh, manifested by pyroptosis and necroptosis, and in plants uh, by uh, our familiar hypersensitive response. Um, program cell death can be uh, very uh, easily diagnosed. It is diagnosed by detection of reactive oxygen species um, production or burst by uh, you can detect um, cell death with uh, common uh, cytological kits like live dead uh, kit, uh, nuclear shrinkage by just uh, staining um, DNA or staining um, nuclei to visualize sh their shrinkage fragmentation and um, DNA uh, diffusion. And then um, somewhat more sophisticated methods uh, once those first um, screens um, allow uh, for detection of um, program cell death. Now, importantly, again, mucoromycotina are capable of, of program cell death. In fact, mucosercinoloides was one of the first fungi where program cell death was reported and it was reported to be caused by lovastatin, um, anti-cholesterol drug. And here are uh, 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 germinating spores of mucosercinoloides um, germinating without lovastatin and with lovastatin. And uh, hopefully you can see in the live uh, dead um, viability assay, there are clear differences with uh, in um, cellular appearance and also nuclear fragmentation in propidium iodide. So we went on and uh, reconstructed uh, hypothetical innate immunity and programmed cell death signaling networks in mucosercinoloides. And so um, obviously, uh, as, ex as, as expected, uh, mucosercinoloides uh, has adenylate um, cyclases and multiple copies of it. It has um, another potential um, receptor, pattern recognition receptors of um, microbial uh, molecular patterns. And as evidenced by the uh, appearance of uh, program cell death, it has uh, the machinery that is responsible. Now, the question is, uh, is there a connection between uh, innate immunity machinery and the machinery that is responsible for program cell death? And I am hoping this is, this is um, a subject of active research in our lab, and I am hoping that I will be able to report in very near future whether um, there is this connection. So in conclusion, uh, we believe that um, early divergent fungi respond to bacteria in a way that resembles innate immunity responses defenses in plants and animals. And in particular, early divergent fungi are capable of producing reactive oxygen species and uh, cell wall remodeling when challenged by bacteria. And um, we are interested in uh, discovering whether program cell death is uh, part of uh, fungal innate immunity. And uh, going back to the mutualistic interactions, whether uh, 
bacteria that are able to overcome fungal defenses um, and enter the cells, how they manipulate their hosts and, um, and control their reproductive biology. And with this, I would like to uh, thank our collaborators and our sources of funding.